Welcome back to the Biotechnology Lecture Series. This is the sixth lecture on the environmental biotechnology. In this lecture, we will cover phytotechnology and its types, terrestrial phytosystems, metal phytoremediation, and rhizofiltration, with its conclusion and research questions. Phytotechnology involves the use of plants for various environmental applications, such as soil and water remediation. It utilizes the natural capabilities of plants to absorb, accumulate, and transform pollutants, making it an eco-friendly and cost-effective approach to tackle environmental contamination. Phytotechnology is further described as terrestrial phytosystems, metal phytoremediation, and rhizofiltration. Terrestrial phytosystems involve the use of plants on land to remediate contaminated soils and sediments. This approach is particularly useful in brownfield remediation, urban reclamation, and areas affected by industrial or agricultural pollutants. Plants are chosen based on their ability to tolerate and accumulate specific pollutants. Terrestrial phytosystems offer a multitude of benefits. Firstly, they contribute to soil stabilization and effectively control erosion, preventing the loss of valuable topsoil. Additionally, these systems enhance overall soil health and fertility by fostering microbial activity, improving nutrient cycling, and enriching soil structure. Furthermore, the presence of lush vegetation in urban areas not only provides an aesthetic appeal, but also offers recreational spaces for residents, promoting a healthier and more enjoyable environment within cities. For example, sunflower, Helianthus annuus, known for its ability to extract heavy metals such as lead, arsenic, and uranium from contaminated soil. Sunflowers have been utilized in phytoremediation efforts around Chernobyl and Fukushima nuclear disaster sites. Metal phytoremediation focuses on using plants to remove or reduce metal contaminants from soils, sediments, or water. Plants have the ability to accumulate metals in their tissues through processes like phytoextraction and phytostabilization. Phytoextraction involves plants absorbing metals via their roots and accumulating them within their shoots and leaves. Once the plants have absorbed these metals, the harvested biomass can be efficiently removed serving as an effective method to decrease the metal content in the soil. On the other hand, phytostabilization is a technique where plants play a critical role in preventing metal movement. They achieve this by stabilizing the metals within the soil, thereby reducing their bioavailability and the potential for leaching into the surrounding environment. For example, Indian mustard, Brassica juncea, Effective in phytoextracting heavy metals like lead, cadmium, and zinc from contaminated soils. Its deep rooted nature allows it to access metals in the soil effectively. Rhizofiltration is a specialized form of phytoremediation that utilizes plant roots to filter and remove contaminants from water. The roots of certain plants can absorb pollutants such as heavy metals, organic compounds, and nutrients, improving water quality. In the process of rhizofiltration, plant roots actively uptake contaminants found in the water. These contaminants accumulate within the intricate root system of the plants. Subsequently, the water, now cleansed of these pollutants, is released back into the environment. Rhizofiltration offers several advantages including being a cost-effective and sustainable approach to water treatment. Moreover, it reduces reliance on conventional water treatment processes and demonstrates adaptability for application in both natural and constructed wetlands. Water hyacinth, Itornia crassips, known for its ability to absorb pollutants like heavy metals, making it effective in the rhizofiltration of contaminated water bodies. Phytotechnology, including terrestrial phytosystems, metal phytoremediation, 
and RISA filtration offers promising solutions for environmental remediation. Leveraging the natural abilities of plants to combat pollution not only contributes to a healthier environment, but also supports sustainable and eco-friendly approaches to managing contaminated land and water. Understanding and implementing these phytoremediation techniques are essential for addressing environmental challenges and creating a more sustainable future. Here are some research questions related to topic. Number one, how do different plants vary in their ability to extract specific heavy metals from contaminated soils and what factors influence this variance? Number two, what are the most effective and sustainable plant-based systems for remediating contaminated brownfields and industrial areas? Number three, how can we optimize rhizofiltration with specific plants to efficiently remove heavy metals and organic pollutants from water, considering varying environmental conditions? Number three, how can we enhance the efficiency of phytoremediation in contaminated areas using innovative plant selection and management techniques? That's all from the sixth lecture. See you in the next video for lecture number seven.